All right, the first video, which is video seven in our overall uh, chapter here, but the first video involving translations. So again, our isometric transformers, we have discussed rotator, we have discussed reflector, now we are on translator. And in the next series of videos, we will get to dilator. So translator's special, if you want to put special, we could say special ability, is to just slide around. He just kind of moves out of the way of danger. So again, uh, 17th century style uh, musket handgun thingy here. Uh, go to shoot him, and boom. He just, hey, slid out of the way. Pretty, pretty lame there, translator. Hey, guys, I got a fun fact for you. This is true. Okay, I'm not making this up. Not at all. So, in 1996, New York City's Empire Theater was slid 170 feet up 42nd Street to a new location. Isn't that awesome? They took the whole building, they put it on rollers, and they slid it up the street. True story. Fun fact, I know you guys were just, oh, so excited to have that fun fact there. So, before we move, there again is our pre-image. After the building moved, there is our image. And the sliding is our transformation which specifically is our translation. Now the definition of a translation, which this part's on your notes, is that it slides each point in the plane the same distance in the same direction. Okay? So, you know, we could talk about uh, Bobby here, his nose in the pre-image and image, and that distance between Bobby's pre-image nose and his image nose, there's that distance, that should be the same distance from Bobby's right foot pre-image to his right foot image. So if I just took this distance right here, which was nose to nose, and applied it to foot to foot, notice that's the same distance in there. So his nose traveled the same amount, his foot traveled the same amount, everything about him would travel the same amount. Now one thing I did here, if you didn't notice, was I underlined the S and the L, because Translations literally are slides. Get it? Slides. That was the pun. But I've got the SL of slides, which is also the SL in translation. So I try to emphasize that little connection there. Now, since we're just sliding around, um, and we can slide around vertically, we could slide around horizontally, or more than likely, we're going to slide around in some mixture, vertical and horizontal. So here's where the idea of slope but not really slope, is going to come into play. Okay, So our rule for translations kind of looks like this. You know, Here's our pre-image, x, y. We're going to translate, but we're going to add or subtract, because a could be positive or negative, uh, and a is going to represent a horizontal shift, right to left. Because if you think about a graph, the x-axis is the horizontal one. So whatever a is, if a was 2, we'd move over 2 to the right. If A was uh, negative 2, then we'd move 2 over to the left instead. And with the Y part, Y is going to move vertically, or up and down. Okay, And again, with a graph, the Y axis is the vertical axis. So that means we're just going to move up or down depending on the specific value of B. Okay, So A and B could be positive or negative, but typically we always put plus signs in there, okay? So it's the A and the B itself that could be positive or negative. So let's do some examples together. We'll be done. All right, so describe the translation using coordinate notation, which is what we just discussed. Now, notice I've got my pre-image in blue, so that's going to match up with this image here which you can't really tell on your notes because it's in black and white, but that's the story here. Okay, so this goes with this, and this is red, which is going to match with that red. Okay, so all I got to do, instead of focusing on the whole shape, is just to focus on one of the points of my shape. And let's say I use this point right here. And let's say I call that A. Well, this point up here is going to be A prime. I just need to figure out how much shifting was there going on here. And since our x comes first, we're going to move in our horizontal direction, which you don't have to start out this way, but you can, which I would prefer personally. So this slid over 1, 2, 3, 
This one over 3 to the left, which means that's in a negative x direction. So this would be x minus 3. And then it slid up 1, 2, 3, 4. So if it goes up 4, that's in a positive y direction. So then it would be comma y plus 4. And there's our rule. Okay, do we have to check it for the others? No, because it must do this same rule here. And we could just double check it with, say, this point, which I'll call B, and this point B prime. So is it still true that if I go over 3, 1, 2, 3, and up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4? Yeah, it checks out. And so our other points, if I called those C and C prime, would follow the same exact rule. Okay, so the rule works for not just one point, but for all of the points. So you really only have to focus on the one. So second example, let's try another one. So again, blue with that blue, red, there's our image. So again, just pick on, oh, just pick on one point. And let's say I just pick the, kind of the, uh, no, it's not B, sorry. The top of the roof here. This kind of looks like a house maybe, so we'll talk about the roofs. All right, so again, I'm going to go more horizontal first and then vertical. I know slope is rise over run, but since we're talking about coordinates, it's always left, right first and then up, down. So this is going over one, two, three. So again, we went three to the left, which was a negative direction, so x minus three. And now we're going down one, two, three, four. And since we're going down four, that's in a negative y direction, so it would be x minus 3 comma y minus 4 and we're done okay do we have to check the other points no because they're going to be the same exact thing all right now number three here's the pre-image here's the rule now we need to draw in the image where is it going to end up at after our rule okay so again we're going to have to do this for all of our points kinda I think some of you could figure out a way around this so let's just start with f Let's figure out where f prime is going to be. So f is saying it's going to move plus 3, which means left or right. That means right. And then the y is going to be minus 2, so that's up or down. Since it's negative, it's going to go down. So for every one of these points, I'm going to go right 3 and down 2. So right 1, 2, 3, down 2. There is f prime. Same thing for g. Right 3, down 2. And there's G prime. Now, some of you, I know, are probably thinking, well, if F and G, if they are 1, 2, 3, 4 units apart, then G prime would be 4 units over from F prime. So couldn't I just count from F prime 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's where G prime would be? And yeah, absolutely, you can do that. So if you've got a nice shape like a rectangle, for instance, once you do one, you can figure out the others. Okay, so H, notice, is two below G, so H prime is going to be two below G prime. Or again, you can go over one, two, three, down two. Uh, and then, last but not least, J is two below F, so J prime would be two below F prime. And there's J prime. And then we just need to connect and connect. And then there's our image. Now, one little side note here, something fun you could do. If you aren't that great at drawing uh, cubes, like three-dimensional boxes, you could take your pre-image image and connect together each pre-image with its image coordinate, right? Like I'm connecting G to G prime, F to F prime, H to H prime, J to J prime. And now look, you've got a little box here. Just throwing that out there. All right, last example we're going to do together. So now, instead of giving you the graph, I've just given you some points, and I want you to figure out where is the image of this pre-image point going to be at, given this rule. Okay? So according to our rule here, we've got a plus 4 in the x direction, which means we're going to move to the right, since it's positive. And we got a minus 3 in the y direction, so we're going to move down 3. Okay? So now if we just take our points here, we don't have to graph these, but we know with our x-coordinate, again, we're going to add 4, or move right 3. So really our directions aren't going to help us out since we don't have a graph. So this is where we're going to use more of the actual numbers up here. So we need to add 4 
to our x coordinate and we need to subtract 3 from our y coordinate. And so where do we end up at? Well, 5 plus 4 is 9. Negative 3 and negative 3 isn't 0, it's negative 6. So there's where the image coordinate ends up at. All right, same thing, we're going to use the same rule here. So again, we're going to add 4 to our x coordinate. We're going to subtract 3 from our y coordinate. So negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2, and negative 8 minus 3 is negative 11. And again, there's our other image coordinate. So when you have a graph, your directions, up, down, left, right, are really going to come in handy. If you don't have a graph, it's better to stick with just what's actually happening to your numbers there. Mathematically, are we adding, subtracting what to our x's and our y's? So the last example, I want you to try this one. And yes, this one is more algebraic. I have a mixture of you know constants, like negative 2, and variables, like p. So I want you to use this rule with these three points to tell me where the image coordinates will be for triangle ABC. And that is all for the first video on translations. And we will see you for the next video in which you will need a compass and protractor. So we'll see you next video.